of Ecclesiastes 12th chapter of the book of Ecclesiastes chapter number 1 Amen and then from there over Amen in the book of Lamentation chapter number 3 Amen and Verse number 21, we'll start reading. Amen. We'll read in your hearing. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter number 12 and verse number 1. Amen. Simple reading. I've heard it many, many times. Amen. Chapter number 12, verse number 1 reads, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. And over in the book of Lamentation, Chapter number three, beginning at verse number 21, it reads, this I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new, somebody say every. every. Y'all ain't saying nothing, say every. every. Morning. Morning, great is thy faithfulness. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you. We appreciate you for your love and for your kindness. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to stand before your people just one more time. God, we pray on today, Lord God, that you will take charge of this portion of the service, Lord, as you've done other times. Lord, cause us to decrease as you increase. Send forth your power, send forth your word, send forth your anointing that makes preaching easy. God, we pray now that you take the tongue that is within our mouth, make it that of the pen of the ready writer. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Forethought this morning. You can sit down. Forethought this morning. Very simple thought, and I hope to be out of your way pretty soon. Amen. Thought simply says there's a blessing in remembering. There's a blessing in remembering. Somebody say it with me. Say there. A blessing in remembering. There's a blessing in remembering. Or if you want to make it personal, amen, and sweeten that up a little bit, you can say the blessing in remembering, amen. Um, we, we sent this out, amen, when it happened, and I just want to read something to you that came across just about 13 days ago. Uh, it says on June 5th, it says, shootings in three American cities killed nine people and wounded two dozen more on Saturday night and Sunday morning. The latest outbreaks of gun violence in the wake of three mass shootings that have rattled the United States. We talked about these a little earlier. You remember those shootings, amen. The school shooting down in Texas and amen. Then you had the grocery store killing where African Americans were targeted for whatever reason. Amen. And then you've got uh, the other shooting, that mass shooting that took place. This is after those. Uh, in Philadelphia, there was a shooting in Michigan. 
uh, Saginaw, Michigan, there was a shooting, and uh, uh, the other one that speak that's spoken of here, I believe, was in Chattanooga, Tennessee, if I'm not mistaken. These are all things that have happened uh, within uh, the last 14 days. Amen. And then there was another that went out, um, and uh, Evangelist Harvell sent me this one where there was a church in Alabama uh, where uh, a 70 year old man went in and shot up three people, I believe. Uh, I think there were three people that were killed. Amen. And that's 70 years old. Amen. And uh, the individuals that were killed, I believe, were between the ages of 70 and 85. Um, it's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, then I sent another one out where it, when it was dealing with um, a pride event in, uh, I believe it was Utah or somewhere there about, and this satanic organization was uh, going to be doing unbaptisms. So they were going to unbaptize you. Amen. And, uh, you know, they ended up not going, but just shows you what we're dealing with in this day and time. Amen. And these are all real stories. These are all headlines that make our news every day. Y'all follow me. Amen. And uh, within the media, there is always more and more mention about these types of acts and behaviors. There's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of things happening, and the enemy is on a prowl. And very seldom do you hear uh, any good news shared, any mention of great things happening that would bring about or purport life. Amen. You hear about all of the negative things, and I want to share with you that the reason you hear about the negative things in the news is because that's what people thrive on. That's what sells the news channels. They want to know and understand the varying things that are happening. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of movements that are taking place. And quite frankly, uh, you, you got to be careful about what you get yourself tied up into because even though they talk about all uh, Black Lives Matter and all of these different things, let me share with you that every life matters. Doesn't matter the creed, the color of the skin, the socioeconomic status, doesn't matter how much money they've got in the bank. Every life, every soul is important because all souls belong to God. And so we are not in position to uh, uh, put up or trump one over the the other we have to understand that when God created man he created man not to be divided but he created man to be a tool of worship a man that would give God the glory and the praise and the honor for being who he is and a man it would appear that within our society there is a lot of attempts to divide and when the enemy learns to divide he learns to conquer praise the Lord Bible says a house divided within itself cannot stand. And so whenever the enemy comes in, the first thing he wants to do is divide so that he can break down the strength and conquer. Can the church say amen? And man, chances are that when these individuals woke up that morning, they did not anticipate that it would be the last day they would ever see on this earth. Amen. It could be assumed that these individuals uh, uh, went forward with their daily activities as though nothing was going to happen because uh, they did not have a thought in their mind to a notion that would clue them into knowing that today will be the last day that I'll be able to draw breath because uh, of a ridiculous uh, self-centered type of uh, 
of event that an individual decided to take upon themselves and do which would result in the loss of lives. Most people, including, amen, those present in today's society, they rise in the morning never to give thought as to where life's journey is going to lead them from day to day. Amen. Many people, they, they wake up and they go through the regular routine and you do it. You get up in the morning. Amen. You have a routine, whether your routine is that you get up and say, thank you, Jesus, and start your day or your routine is that you don't give Jesus the time of day and you start brushing your teeth, whatever your routine is, you get up every day and you do your routine. You're going to wash yourself up. You're going to hopefully you wash yourself up. Amen. You're going to wash yourself up and uh, you're going to get dressed and you're going to continue your day as you normally would, whether that's getting ready for work or putting the children together to get them off to where they need to go. You have a routine throughout your day. And uh, many times people feel as though they are in control of uh, their own lives. And though it's not spoken aloud in the heart, amen, many people feel as though they are not subject to the misfortunes in life. I want you to listen real closely to me. I'm going to preach in just a minute, Sister Anne. I might need you to help me out just slightly. Amen. But I want you to listen really closely here because there are so many people that have become comfortable with these types of situations that are happening around us and if you were to chalk it up you could talk it up to one term which is desensitization and uh, amen because these things happen on a regular now when you hear about them because it's normal you become desensitized I'm gonna wake you up in a moment here amen you become desensitized and it doesn't bother you like it would have have bothered you before because uh, amen it's always happening around you and by nature now, you don't anticipate it to happen at your doorstep uh, or in your life can the church say amen Amen. But I've got news for everybody sitting here today that, amen, one thing about life, life does not channel its mishaps to a certain group of individuals. Amen. Life will find you wherever you are and it will make you pay the price of living. Amen. And so why it is so important that, amen, we attempt to live every day as though it is our last day. Can the church say amen? Amen. You are not exempt. We are not exempt from life's calamities. Amen. For the Bible itself declares that time and chance they happen to them all. Amen. And so we are not excluded from life's uh, challenges or the things that life throws at us. Amen. Because we are creatures we are living within this world we are subject to the calamities that happen in the world amen God did not declare that he would pull life from happening from you but what God does declare is that he will provide you a way of escape and let me tell you something that way of escape may not always be that you come out alive but you come out in the end winning can the church say amen uh, amen you must understand or we must understand here that the fact that only security that you are going to find within this ungodly world is to be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ uh, amen the blood of Jesus will shield and it will protect you from dangers whether they are seen and let me work with the unseen because the fact of the matter is just because 
it wasn't your school that was shot up and uh, just because it wasn't your church uh, that was shot up and just because it wasn't your home that was broken to and violated does not mean that it was not almost your home uh, does not mean that it was not almost your church and uh, does not mean that it was not almost your school but God who has sent and given his angels charge concerning you has placed angels to your attention that when you are not looking out for yourself it was the unseen that the angels protected you from which is why every day God allows you to come into the house of the Lord you should come in with a praise on your lips you should come in with a song in your heart because honey you don't know what it was that God has protected you from you could have been the next statistic that was placed on the television it could have been your children that rose in the morning went to their schoolhouse and had been shot up but honey you can stand and say that it was the grace of God that stopped it from coming to your doorstep and it would cause you who are sincere to God to open up your mouth and tell God thank you because you didn't allow it to come nigh my dwelling can the church shout hallelujah come on and shout hallelujah again amen it is important for you to understand that it was stated in the book of lamentation that it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed why because his compassions they fail not who wouldn't want to serve a God on father's day who is a father like he is some of us think that we've got good fathers in our lives but honey can I tell you there is none like Jesus Christ there is no father like the Lord of hosts because the father that we have in this earth is only able to help you out of your natural troubles but honey we serve a God who who says that he will be a father to the fathers he will love you unconditionally and honey I love God because even when I don't do the thing that I should always do he still has mercy upon my soul and he still allows grace to step in and block the hand of the wicked and hereby I can say that it is because of the Lord's mercies it is because of the Lord withholding the penalty that was due unto me sometimes sometimes I feel my help now sometimes sometimes we come into the house of God and we feel as though we made it in on our our own recovery yeah. we made it in with our own activity of live yeah. that we made it in on our own breath yeah. but honey I came to tell you yeah, that if the father yeah, were to withdraw his breath yeah, you would not be able yeah, to be where you are today yeah. so if I can shake somebody in here yeah, and help you to understand yeah, that when you were out there doing you it was the mercy of God that shrouded and protected you when your children who by the way were not saved were out there doing their own thing it wasn't because of luck but it was because the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous they had availed much and honey when you were out there doing your thing it was the fragrance it was the vile of 
prayer that made it up to the throne that told the Lord give him a little more time but don't let the enemy take them out right now because they're not fit to live but they're not ready to die and because of this the Lord had compassion and he had mercy and mercy stood between you and Yvonne mercy stood between you and Pennsylvania mercy stood between you and Alabama I'm knocking at your door now mercy stood between you and Saginaw Michigan mercy stood between you and Utah and mercy said I'm not going to allow the enemy to chew them up right now but I I am God and because of my mercy I'm going to extend the mercy I'm going to extend the grace and it is by the Lord's mercy that you are not consumed because of his compassion they fail not I'm so glad that the Lord's compassion ain't like my compassion. I'm so glad that the Lord's compassion ain't like your compassion. Because your compassion would have told him to let him hit his head and pay the price. But the Lord, who is rich in mercy and in his love, wherewith he have loved us has called us into the beloved and now we can stand the same it does not yet appear what we shall be but I'm so glad that mercy held me long enough to get to a place where grace could turn around pick me up set my feet on straight street but I must learn that when it's time to come into the ark of God when it's time to come into the presence of God I must come in with my hands lifted up because I realize that if it had not been for the Lord who is on my side I wouldn't have been able to walk into the house of God I wouldn't come in with my sedity self thinking God owed me something but I'll come in like the psalmist said I will bless the Lord at all times. Is there anybody in the church today that's learned how to bless the Lord? Is there anybody in the church today that's glad the Lord did not allow the enemy to kill you? Is there anybody that's in the church on today that's glad the Lord didn't allow help me sister Anna didn't allow the enemy to kill your children doing a hundred miles down the highway he was a shield he was a buckler is there anybody in here that's glad even though my siblings, my children, my mama, my daddy are not where they're supposed to be. It is because of the Lord's mercy that they are not consumed. I dare somebody who's grateful, for real, for real, to jump to your feet, give God a praise because he remembered you when you didn't remember yourself. He remembered 
happened to you when you didn't know your life was in jeopardy stand to your feet if you came to thank him open up your mouth throw your head back open up your mouth tell the Lord Lord I thank you Lord I thank you Come on, church. Lord, I thank you. I could have been part of the rock, of the entourage that lost their life. My children could have been a part of those that lost their life. You couldn't even figure them out. Faces disfigured, body parts laying across the school. They're going in, trying to put them together. Let me bring context. It could have been you, but God said not so. You ought to praise him. You ought to thank him. You ought to open up your mouth and say, Lord, thank you for remembering me. Give God praise. Oh, shit, I go. It is as equally imperative that we have knowledge that the devil is on a mission to destroy any and everything you have to do with in order to stop you from getting closer to God. I know that's right. I'm preaching now. The devil will use the closest thing it got to you to distract you from your purpose in God. But when you have an assignment and it's come from God, God remembers the assignment. God remembers where you were. God remembers the anointing he placed upon you. And if God anointed you to do it, you shall. You shall. Let's get affirmative in here. Say, I shall. I shall. I shall. Now bring it in. Say, I am. Say, I am victorious. There ain't a devil in hell that can box with the mercy of God. There ain't a devil in hell that can wrestle with the grace of God. So much so that the angels looked into it and they posed the question. They said, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him? You must understand that when God has an assignment in your life, the devil will try to blind you from the truth of your assignment. And while you out there doing your own thing, God's mercy is saying there's an assignment. God's mercy is saying there's an assignment assignment when the devil came upon you to eat up your flesh God said that is an assignment when cancer came upon you to take you out God stepped between you and cancer and said that is an assignment it can't happen it won't happen I remember my assignment now the only thing God is waiting on you is to remember him in the days of your youth why you still got the activity of your limb while you still got breath in your body remember him remember him remember him and when the going 
gets tough and the road gets rough and the heels are hard to climb. You can say like the old prophet Habakkuk said, God is strengthening me. He'll make my feet like hands feet. Cause me to tread upon my high places. Now I remember him. I remember how he saved me. I remember how he kept me. Will somebody rest to your feet and give God a remembrance praise? Is that all you got to remember him by? Is that all you got to remember him by? Somebody ought to go down memory lane when God saved you from yourself. When the doctor said you wasn't going to make it. When they gave up on you, you learned and you thought about what God said. You remembered and there's a blessing in remembering because when your mind went back in the scripture you heard the scripture say even though they telling me this even though they telling me that even though the doctor is right now a negative report my remembrance tells me I've got a blessing and my remembrance it say who shall who shall who shall believe the report of the Lord and to whom is the hour of the Lord revealed there's a blessing in remembering day and say when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I'll fear no evil son of y'all need to remember God in your valley. There's a blessing in remembering. Open up your mouth and praise him. There's a blessing in remembering. There's a blessing in remembering. When I get so down and out, and it seemed like I don't want to go no further because all hell is breaking loose. I remember Habakkuk. Habakkuk said, even though the fig tree shall not blossom, and even though there's no fruit in the vine, the olive shall fail, and there's no herd in the stall. But when I remember the latter part of the prophet Habakkuk, Habakkuk said, I'm still going to joy in the God of my salvation. I got a challenge to greater apostolic today. I've got a challenge in here. Is there anybody in here who is determined to steal joy in the call of your salvation? You ain't got to wait till somebody else praise him. You ain't got to wait till somebody else say thank you. You ain't got to wait to come down to the altar. You can come and get what God has for you right now because I remember that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof if I need some joy he owns the world and they that dwell therein he established it upon the sea and upon the flood but I remember when I get done quacking 
uh, with the ducks uh, that won't praise him. Uh, I've got to learn uh, to take flight uh, into glory, uh, into the other heavens. Uh, and so I remember uh, the scripture uh, that posed the question, uh, who shall uh, ascend uh, into the hill uh, of the Lord? Uh, is there anybody uh, that want to ascend with me? Uh, is there anybody uh, that want to go up with me? Is there anybody that's tired of the devil's life and you're ready to remember the blessings? There's a blessing in remembering the prodigal son was blessed in remembering down there with the hog down there with the swine he remembered my father he got houses he got food bread and enough to spare so i'm gonna go back to my father there's a blessing in remembering i said there's a blessing in remembering I said, there's a blessing in remembering. And when the devil come beating up on you, there's still a blessing in remembering. Because God don't take lightly to no adversary beating up on his children. Well, Bishop, how do you know? Let me give you some word. The Bible says, touch not mine anointed and do my prophet no harm. I know the context in which it was written. But the point stands. If God anointed you, can't nobody touch you without God's permission. So it's a win-win. Because if God say don't touch him, you win. And if God say touch him and you go through hell, just know that you're coming out shining, bright, fabulous, anointed, great, powerful. Shout hallelujah. There's a blessing in remembering. Well, Bishop, God ain't did it for me. Well, he did it for Brother Roy. Don't you remember that? Oh, shit. Bishop, God ain't do it for me. Well, he did it for Mother Carter. Do you remember that? Bishop God ain't did it for me, but he did it for me. Do you remember that? Hallelujah. And how do we overcome? By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our... Somebody ought to jump to your feet and testify and say, God did it for me. So just remember that if he did it for me, he's no respecter. There's a blessing in remembering. There's a blessing in remembering. You ain't got to walk around with your head hung, hung low. Anybody who feel this, you come to the altar. And you ain't got to walk around with your head hung low. I feel healing in the building today. I feel healing in the building today. I feel healing in the building today. Hallelujah, honey, if you need healing, it's here today. Hallelujah, God is remembering you. Hallelujah, God is remembering you. Hallelujah, don't wait until the battle is over. Claim it. There's a blessing in remembering. It's because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because his compassion fails not. And one thing I love about God, ain't nothing stale about him. Sister Denise, you ain't got to live on yesterday's compassions, yesterday's mercies. Because the Bible goes on to say that they are new every 
morning. And then, mother, here comes the kicker. After he done said all of that, and you read the preceding verses that talked about the calamities that they were in. And if he says all of that, he comes down and he tells them, after his mercies are renewed every morning, he says, let me give you a, a freebie. Great. 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 When your hard-headed tail wouldn't praise him, he's still great. When you wouldn't give him the time of day, he's still great. When you came into the church like you own something, he's still great. Great. He ain't like you. He ain't like me. He ain't faithful when you faithful, but great is his faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. There's a blessing in remembering. Everybody rest to your feet. Everybody rest to your feet. Greetings in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you for being with us at the Greater Apostolic Church of Christ where our pastor is the Honorable Bishop Aaron J. Batiste Sr. You can also give to this ministry at www.gacoc.com and also you can text following the information at the bottom of this screen. Again, we say thank you for being with us and we're so excited to look forward to seeing you again. Have a blessed day in Jesus' name. Amen.